Yes, sir. Proverbs chapter 20. I ain't leaving you out, man. You got responsibilities too. I'm trying to give you some weapons so you won't get out there and get Tom, Dick, and Harry. And they know nothing about the world. All you got is a pimp who pimp in your mind, whether it be male or female. Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 6. All this information is in here. Great knowledge to all of your steps so you can be successful in life. But people run up, run past the Bible like, they don't mean that. I got to live, I got life. No, you don't. Your life stops when you get into this book, when you become baptized, when you enter into covenant with your wife. Your life stops. It's all about consulting with each other. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 6. Go ahead. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness. Yes, sir. But a faithful man who can find. He said, man, most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness. You know how some men like to look good in front of everybody. Tell them everything they do and all this stuff, but your wife know. Or you we talk about it, men right He said, but a faithful man who can find it. Men, are you faithful? You faithful to your wife? You ain't out there sleeping around? Physically or mentally? Because you can have spiritual adultery too. The type. Go ahead. The just man walketh in his integrity. What is integrity? When you step in the wrong man, you want everybody to look at you like, man, you know, he got that respect. When you step in the room, instead of everybody stepping in the hall, man, hide your women, hide your children, hide your wives, take them old thief in jail. You don't want that. And that's how Israel is. They ain't got no integrity. Ain't nobody know anything about me. I demand respect. You know what I'm saying? And every man should demand that. Don't be no clown. Don't be no clown. Because you're affecting somebody. Go ahead. Who you affecting? Go ahead. The just man walketh in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. His children are blessed after him. That's what you got to have, man. You got a whole set of family. They'll, they'll say, man, you got a whole set of bad family that are bad. I remember when I was in school, they used to say certain family names. Oh, yeah, that's them, that's them partners right now. All of them bad. And you look at them like, ah, oh, it can't be true. But look at them, they bad. Why? Because of what's going on in the household. Marriages ain't there. Men with integrity ain't there. They just running wild. This is what you got to have, man. This is what exercising a good marriage looks like. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 13. Still dealing with the man. Women need to know this more than choosing a spouse, and men need to know this before they get a spouse. Proverbs 13, verse 2. They have so much stuff in him about this. Why have I? 30 scripts, let me cut. Proverbs chapter 13, and verse 2. And believe me, I don't want nobody in the marriage to feel like. Oh man, he talking like he like he he doing it all the play, man. This that's what we written for me. Most of all. So I can check myself. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 2. Go ahead. A man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth. Yes, sir. But the soul of the transgressor shall eat violence. Look at the man out here. He said the man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth. Wait, what's in your mouth? How you talking? Everybody want to beat you up? Or you call violence everywhere you go? You know what some of them, I need a thug. I need somebody to protect me. I need somebody about these streets. You stupid if you think, well, you um, crazy if you think this way. Nah, you don't need no thug, you need a man of God who gonna demand 
respect, have integrity. And we call it respect and integrity is rules. He gonna have some rules and she gonna have some rules. Go ahead. He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life. What did he say? Mm. He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life. Watch what's coming out your mouth. Don't be talking all the time. Man, you get so many to be talk, 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 talk. Tell us something to lie that you can't even keep up with them. <laughs> I, I ain't got time for all that talking. I'm about to ask you. I'm at my best when I'm quiet. Because I'm going to be, I can think. But if I'm running my mouth, I can't think that much. That's why the book said, be slow to speak and eager to listen. Go ahead. But he that openeth wide his lips shall have destruction. Open it wide his lips. It's always talking about nonsense. Go ahead. The soul of a slugger desire. What is a slugger? Lazy. Lazy. Shall desire. Go ahead. And has nothing, mm -hmm. but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. All I tell you, man, if you diligent about the gift that God gave you, you're going to have some money. You're going to keep money. You're going to make sure you balance your finances. And that will hurt Israel the most. We got money, we don't know what to do with it. I done found it's, it's a fact that it ain't about making money. It's about what you do when you get your money. Mm -hmm. Don't nobody know what to do with it. Israel worked harder than anybody in the world, but we the brokest some people in the world. And that man got to be that set the tone in the household, teach your kids how to say, teach your wife how to say, teach them be an example. Be an example. Go ahead. A righteous man hateth lying, mm -hmm. but a wicked man is loathsome and cometh to shame. You know, right man hate that lie, but the wicked man, he loathes him and commits the same. He's shameful. He don't care. Hmm. Jump down to verse 20. Go ahead. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Check who you hanging with. Check who you hanging with. I don't hang with nobody. Nobody that much. If I hang with you, you got some respect for me. Go ahead. Evil pursueth sinners, but to the righteous good shall be repaid. Yeah, so evil pursueth sinners. That's all evil is linked to. Sinners. So if you got a homeboy, homegirl who out here sinning a lot, God said, man, why do you hang with? That stuff, is, you sometimes can interfere with stuff that's supposed to hit them, but it's free the fire hit you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children. What you leaving for your kids, man? What you leaving? It ain't got to be nothing big. You can get an insurance policy. And start paying on it. Sharing power, 50, 50, $50 a month, you can get you two, three hundred thousand dollars. Paying on it. And you can leave that to them. It ain't got to be nothing like, I got to leave, man. If you got land, you can leave that to them too. But you got to have a plan. As a man, leave them something, have something. Instead of just work, spend, work, spend, work, spend. And then that old man, then this old man gave me some good advice when I first started. He said, look, man, he said, now you're going to be two people in your lifetime. He said, you're a young man now. He said, but don't let that young man spend up all that money from that old man you're going to become. Prepare the way. And also, as men, you need to prepare the way for your kids so you can give them something, leave them something. Israel never leave hardly anything for their kids. <clears throat> That's why we stay in the hole all the time. The white folk, they leave all kinds of stuff. They got insurance policies on everybody. They might got one on you. And you don't even know. On the job, they got insurance policies on you. This is what he tells me men to do so your marriage can grow. And believe me, man, when you got, when you, when you have the business like that, that woman will look at you like, 
Hey, he have a business. I can stay here. Even though some of this stuff I don't like, but I still can stay here. He gonna take care of me. Go ahead. A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. See, they always quote their second hand. They don't ever quote their first hand. That's, that, that, that's when you got to do something. You got to save or some money for somebody, not yourself. And most people don't want to give out money. They want to consume it on themselves. Save something for themselves, for your children, children. Go ahead. Much food is in the tillage of the poor, mm. but there is that is destroyed for want of judgment. Go ahead. He that spareth his rod hateth his son. Yes, sir. But he that loveth his loveth him chasteneth him betimes. You get on that behind, man. You the disciplinary. Mm -hmm. You spoil your child. If you don't chase him, meaning correct him, not just talking about whooping. You got to make sure you whoop a man correct him. Tell him why you whooping him. You got to know something. Mm -hmm. Not just giving them everything they want. That's when they become really crazy. Yes. And they turn around and try to kill you. <laughs> I don't know. You see all the white folk, I remember the story about the Menendez brother when I came out, when I was coming up. He catch all that money they were leaving their mom and dad. Man, they killed their mom and dad. They thought they got away with it. Mm. Try to teach them something besides giving them money. The word is the pathway to life for your kids to make sure they are governed. Just like your marriage should be governed by the laws of this book. Governed. Finish with that? One more verse. Go ahead. The righteous eateth to the satisfying of his soul. Yes, sir. But the belly of the wicked shall want. See, when you sorry, you always want it. But the righteous who handle the business of the book and their family, you're going to get full. You're like, man, I got to eat all this stuff. I can do this tomorrow. I can eat tomorrow. But you see a sorry, they try to get everything they can get in them because they know they might not get it tomorrow. That's not preparation as a man. You got to prepare. Feed your family and yourself. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 31. Let's look at a perfect example of marriage. I learned something about this proverb. Everybody want to go there and say proverb 31 one, but you look at this this king. Mother taught him that, so he'll know what to, know how a virtuous woman will be. She taught me this proverb. Verse one. Let me show you. Go ahead. The words of king. The words of king. Let me live you well. The prophecy that his mother taught him. So his mother taught him this. Mamas, you know, you can teach your kids something, your son something too, to watch out for the wicked women too. She taught him this, what to look for in a woman. Jump out of verse 10. Go ahead. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. Who can find a good? Upstanding woman who ain't gonna commit a on you, who gonna keep the house up, who gonna keep the kids up, who gonna, you know what I'm saying, keep you uplifted. Who can find? That's what she teaching him. Go ahead. The heart of her husband do it safely trust in her. Yes, sir. So that he shall cleave no need of spoil. He said the heart of her husband do it safely trust in her. So that he shall have no need to spoil. She take care of the business of the house. He got to worry about nothing to eat. He come home and know she got something on the table. When my dad was living, I knew when I came home at a certain time day, food going to be on that table. He got tired of us coming over and said, Boy, don't y'all got wives? He used to tell my brother that. Boy, don't y'all got wives? We used to come over there and eat all the time. We know what time it is time to eat. 
It don't change in our house. But we got so many things we got to do. It ain't very many women want to do that today. Go ahead. Verse 12. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. This is what this woman teach. This woman taught this king Lemuel. She will do him good and not evil all the days of your life. They're looking for somebody to grow old with. Find a wife or husband to grow old with. You got to have boundaries. You got to have rules. He, and she teaching her son this about this proverb 31 woman. Go ahead. She seeketh wool and flight, worketh willingly with her hand. She know how to do something. She working willingly with her hand. She seeking wool and flat. She got a business. Don't get intimidated when the women got skills. Men, like I said, we like I said, you got a lot of women who are highly educated today who can do a lot of stuff. As long as we got these rules that we can govern each other, I ain't got no problem with it. You should have a problem with it. A woman went to school and, and, and accumulated all these skills, it's kind of hard for her to say, I'm going to just sit and be a housewife for the rest of my life. Now, uh, you know, it ain't telling me to do that. Go ahead. She is like the merchant ships. She bringeth her food from far. This woman got merchandise. She got like a merchant ship. You go over house and bar every night, she got it. She got a chain that everybody have more and stuff from everybody. She got it at her house. She made sure they have her family have. Go ahead. She rises also when it is yet night mm -hmm. and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. She cooks. She cooks. She feeds her family and she feeds the people who work for her. This is what this virtuous woman done doing. Go ahead. She considered the field and buy it. She got that bread. Hmm. She considered the field and buy it. She got some money. She ain't always just waiting on the husband to give her something. She out there making money with her hands. Yes, sir. Go ahead. With the fruit of her hands, she planted the vineyard. She go out there, she got a garden. She got food growing in the garden. She buying a field. She gonna make some money off this field. Go ahead. She girded her loins with strength and strengthened her arms. She in shape. Go ahead. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. She makes sure she check her merchandise to make sure it's straight. Cause it's dog. That don't mean that she turn the light off and stop working. She keep working. She ain't lazy. Go ahead. She lays her hands to the splendor, and her hands hold the distaff. I guess it's talking about a sewing machine, and all day she making stuff. Splendor, like a sewing machine. Go ahead. She stretches out her hand to the poor. Mm. Yea, she searches forth her hands to the needy. She reaches, she reaches forth, forth for the hand to the needy. She don't just turn her back. She don't just turn it back on the poor. You got a lot of people out here, poor ask for a quarter or a dollar. Give it to them. Keep rolling. That's all you want? We supposed to run to the poor and need Nah, you gonna, you know we we start interrogating people. What you gonna use for? You gonna buy some liquor? Or you gonna buy some food? I ain't got time to be worried about that. I give them the money, keep going. God gonna bless me for doing that. Stop interrogating people. This woman didn't do that. She fed them. Go ahead. 21. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. Because she got all the clothes ready for the winter. You got kids today going out here to school with no coats. Your mom let you come out here with that? Well, I ain't got no coat. Your parents let you come out? This woman right here, she take care of all that business. Ain't nobody going out of the house without a coat. She probably got three or four coats in there. Go ahead. She maketh herself covering of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. She got expensive stuff. 
She looking good when she grow. Go ahead. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. Her husband is known in the gates. She ain't married no sucker. The man got respect whoever she married. Go ahead. She make it fine linen and sell it there and deliver it girdles unto the merchant. This woman is working, she making stuff with her hands. This her gift. She making this stuff and selling it. Whatever your gift is, do it. Go ahead. Strength and honor are her clothing. <clears throat> And she shall rejoice in time to come. Strength and honor is a call, man. She honorable, man. She, that's an honorable woman. She's a virtuous woman. Say, who can find this woman? Who is like this woman? Go ahead. She opened her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. Oh, the law in her, in her tongue? Mm. Law of kindness. When she opened her mouth, she's talking about God. She's going to try to get this conversation about God. But you got most people out here, you don't hear, you don't even know if they're a Christian. They're like, oh, you a Christian? I ain't know that. Because <laughs> ain't nothing in their mouth but death. <laughs> but this woman right here had the law of kindness and all. She's very kind. Go ahead. 27. She looketh well to the ways of her household. Yes, sir. And eateth not the bread of idleness. She take care of the household. She keep it clean. She ain't just sit up there all tired to go to sleep. We got this shit all the same. Everything just messed up in the house. She ain't gonna just sit there and do that. Not this one. Go ahead. Her children will rise up and call her blessed. Yes, sir. Her husband also. And he praises her. Perfect harmony in the house. Now, this right here is a goal. Tell people now, this is a goal. <laughs> right here. Go ahead. Many daughters have done virtuously. He said her daughters, well, her children rise and call her blessed, and her husband also. And he praises her. That's big. I don't know no woman I want to hear that from a family. Because this woman took care of the business. <clears throat> she took care of it. Go ahead. Many daughters have done virtuously but thou excellest them all. Mm. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. See what he said? Favor is deceitful. People use a favor for wickedness. And he said beauty. You don't want to be concerned about how good a person looks. Be concerned about what's in here, in the mind, what's coming out of that tongue. That's what he tell you. Don't be worried about that body. The body gonna fade, buddy. They might look fine now. Check them out 40, 50 years later. They ain't going to be the same. They're going to be another fine one pop up then. Yeah, and, <laughs> no, I ain't saying pop up and get them, but there's going to be always somebody there more beautiful than you are, whoever you are. <laughs> they think it's a little hush. Go ahead, read that again. Favor is deceitful. And beauty is vain. Yes, sir. But a woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. That's what it's about, women. The woman that feared the Lord. Not a friend. Not a boss. But the Lord and his instructions. Follow his ways. Go ahead. Give her all the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. What's in your hands, women? What's in your hands? What fruit coming out your hand? What are you producing? Is it a bunch of foolishness to be proud of, or is it a bunch of good to be proud of? It's a whole lot of foolishness going on that social media when they clicking and typing. Foolishness in their hand. That fruit right now. What you putting on that social media? What are you doing? Because you are affecting the whole world. The whole world can see you at any time. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and the 11. Go ahead. 
Guys, be careful out here. Marriage is big business, son. Big old, big old business. My little boy today got about two hours in him. Let me see like that. First Corinthians chapter seven and verse one. Let's look at something else that's real major in um, marriage is also. Go ahead. Now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. It ain't good to be touching too much of stuff, man. Like, you know what happens when you start touching a woman? What's going to happen? Go ahead. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife. Yes, sir. And let every woman have her own husband. See, when you start touching, we're talking about a sexual or we just talking about marriage now, outside of marriage, you're looking for something that's um, that's gonna lead you to fornication, you don't need to touch it. If you got a problem with lust, you need to just scale back. Avoid that. That touching thing. You're dealing with marriage now. Go ahead. Let the husband run unto the wife do benevolence. And Benevolence is talking about respect. Go ahead. And likewise also the wife unto the husband. We respect each other. I'm not tearing you down in the streets. You're not tearing me down in the street. You deal with it in the house. We're going to have arguments. Marriage is going to have arguments all the time. I ain't say all the time, but they're going to have them. But you respect each other. Go ahead. The wife has not power of her own body. Mm -hmm. But the husband, and likewise also the husband has not power of his own body, but the wife. Now you can't have no headache every night now. <laughs> <laughs> you got no power when somebody feeling the marriage to earth. Now you got to go ahead and do your job, men and women. Why? Go ahead. Defraud ye not one the other, mm -hmm. except it be with consent for a time that you may give yourselves to fast and prayer. Yes, sir. And come together again that Satan tempt you not for your inconsistency. He said, man, don't defraud yourself from one another. If your spouse want to get it on, hey, you better go drink a head and drink or something. Get yourself up. <laughs> don't defraud yourself from one another. So Satan won't tip in. Because stuff of the world, women of the world, and men will come in and just tell your husband or tell your wife what they want to hear. And it all depends on how strong her faith is or how strong his faith is. That slip. Go ahead. Well, I speak this by permission and not by not of commandment. Mm -hmm. For I would that all men were even as I myself. But every man has his proper gift of God, one after this matter and another after that. Because so Paul wasn't married at all. Right. He didn't have, but he didn't have a wife. He didn't want no wife. He was about the world, he was about God's business. Go ahead. I say therefore to the unmarried and the widows. Now you talking to the unmarried and the widows, go ahead. It is good for them if they abide even as I. Mm-hmm. But if they cannot contain, let them marry. Yes, sir. For it is better to marry than to burn. Well, you better go and get married and get that mm -hmm. lust off you. Right. Then burn. That can be from the, in the lake of fire or the burn of lust. Right. Go ahead. And unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord. Mm -hmm. Let not the wife depart. Depart from her husband. Yes, sir. But, and if she depart, let her remain unmarried. Or be reconciled to her husband. And let not the husband put away his wife. Amen. Uh, God, this is what God instructs in you. We ain't saying it. God saying it. Don't depart from your husband. He hate putting away. He hate divorce. Hate it. I'm going to stop right now. You want to read some more, man? I'll kill you. Well, I just want to make sure everybody understands that, you know, when you're in marriage, hey man, take your rules of the book. It's big business, man. When you 
cross that threshold. And please don't listen to a cat who ain't there. You gonna take up the offering if you have anything? Come up and give it. 